it's time for another Explain the Name video. Elephant and Castle in South London must surely be one of the most curiously named places in London, so I'm not entirely surprised that a few people in the comments section asked how on earth it came to be so called. I actually think I did a video about this a few years back, but it probably wasn't very good, so let's make a better one. Elephant and Castle is part of a larger area known as Newington. It sits in the borough of Southwark in South London. Apart from the name, it's probably most famous for its roundabout, and for the highly divisive shopping centre that was not too long ago knocked down. In the middle of the roundabout is the Michael Faraday Memorial. Aphex Twin claimed to live there at one time, but actually the inside is the electricity substation for the Northern Line. To be honest, claiming to live in an electricity substation is probably not even in the top 10 strangest things Aphex Twin has done. So, whence does the name originate? A popular suggestion I've heard is that it's a corruption of Infanta de Castilla, or Princess of Castile, and refers to Eleanor of Castile, wife of Edward I. This has been widely repeated even in published works, I first encountered it in a book by Bill Bryson. But there is absolutely no evidence to link Eleanor to Elephant. I've even heard it suggested that this is where she first came ashore in England, which is rather odd, given that Elephant and Castle is not by the river. Even if it was, it's south of the river, and Eleanor would have to have passed right through London, past the Tower of London and the Palace of Westminster, and out into the suburbs, to get off the boat in a place that was, at the time, the middle of nowhere. And for the record, no one in England used the word Infanta at the time. Well, I don't know, maybe someone did, but it certainly wasn't in common use. Eleanor does have a place in London named for her, albeit indirectly. Upon her death, her grief-stricken husband had a series of crosses built in her memory. One was in Westminster and would become known as Charing Cross. But back to the elephant. If it's not from the Infanta, where does the name come from? Well, when you find a place with a strange name, a good place to start is down the pub. From around the mid-18th century, we know there was indeed a pub here called the Elephant and Castle. It was a coaching inn, and it's from this that the area takes its name. Before there were railways, coaching inns were probably the closest equivalent to stations, so they could become notable local landmarks. But why call your pub Elephant and Castle? Well, the Elephant and Castle is quite a common name for a pub. There's this one in Woolwich, this one in Kensington, and this former pub in Vauxhall, just to name three. Shakespeare mentions a local pub called The Elephant in Twelfth Night, which was also known as The Oliphant. Pubs often take their names from heraldic devices, usually either a royal device or symbols of a trade. Elephants have several meanings in heraldry. The obvious ones are strength and size. They can stand for wisdom and courage, but bizarrely also modesty and chastity. I can't imagine anything less modest than an elephant, but there you go. They could have a geographical significance, representing Africa or Asia. They could represent war, particularly when paired with a castle. And of course, they could have the straightforward meaning of just an elephant, or ivory. A castle's meaning is more obvious. It tends to mean, again, strength. It also represents safety, security, or home. A castle on an elephant's back might depict a howder. Interestingly, a castle features very prominently on the coat of arms of Castile. What is known of this particular elephant and castle is that before there was a pub here in the 17th century, there was a blacksmith's forge. And this gives rise to what many consider to be the most plausible explanation. And we're going to take a quick trip into the city. This is the headquarters of the Worshipful Company of Cutlers, and they use, as their heraldic device, an elephant and castle. The company not only dealt in cutlery, but also swords and surgical instruments. Anything with a cutting edge, basically. So the elephant and castle might be a war elephant, representing weapons, and the elephant itself might represent the ivory of which cutlery handles were made. Obviously, forging steel was a significant part of the cutler's trade. So the suggestion is that the blacksmith in South London may have had an affiliation with the company. Another suggestion is that the company owned land in the area, but I can't find anything concrete on whether this was actually the case. 
Some sources say yes they did, and some say no they didn't. And I should also mention that at least one historian thinks there's no significance to the name at all, because lots of pubs were called that. I'll let you decide what you think is the most plausible. There is still an Elephant and Castle pub at Elephant and Castle, however, as you can probably tell, it's not the original. The original pub is long gone, having been rebuilt in 1816 and again in 1898, before being bombed in the Second World War and demolished in 1959. In fact, the area as a whole suffered badly during the war and was redeveloped in the 1960s. You can probably tell from the architecture. The only surviving relic of the Victorian pub is the elephant sign, which used to sit outside the shopping centre. It's now part of the otherwise bland and identikit Elephant Park development. So yet again, we don't know for sure where the name comes from, but we have a pretty good idea, and an explanation that is at least historically plausible. A pub named in honour of a blacksmith. I mean, it works for me. Well, I do hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do click the like button and consider subscribing for more. I'd like to thank my donors on Ko-fi and Patreon, and here on YouTube for your ever-generous support. You are the elephant to my castle. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio!